picked the wrong week to quit sniffing blue. Definitely Federation Starship. Accessing registry. NCC 1701C. Well, greetings. Welcome back. It is week three. Week three on the uh, Enterprise C build. Should have been a lot farther along than I was, but I'm still making up for that lost day on Friday. So we're going to pick right back up with the final wiring, and then I think we could still get everything done this week. I've, it'll be uh, wiring, final construction, uh, touch up the paint, decals, and break a bottle over it. It'll be done. So let's uh, waste, waste no more time. Let's get right back to where we left off when we were so rudely interrupted. Okay, before we were so rudely interrupted, we were getting down to the last bits of uh, main uh, section assembly and wiring. I have got the uh, pylons and uh, all of this all wired together. And uh, then I've got a secondary hall where I last thing you saw me do was put in the deflector and the impulse lighting. And then of course we've got all of the lighting installed in the saucer. And I've been thinking about the uh, steps needed to accomplish the rest of this and the uh, procedure that we're going to have to do. So, the methodol methodology, that's the, what I'm working on. Um, because the way this kit is designed, it's designed that you put both halves together and then you slide this assembly in and then you attach the saucer to it. Well, two of those, th two of the out of three ain't bad, as Meatloaf would say, but um, that's not going to get us exactly how we need to, how we need to get this thing finally wired. So what I've decided to do is this: I'm going to um, put. Well, first of all, I have to take these wires. I have to minimize this as much as possible. I'm going to shorten these down and solder them together so I have a smaller knot of wiring coming out of this assembly. And then what I'd like to do is to slide one half of this on and wire up the board and everything and then attach, slide the second half in kind of from the side. I've got no connections going on in here. Uh, whereas I I have attached the uh, deflector dish and this and uh, the switch and everything that I'm going to put on is going to be attached to this side. I want to be able to kind of slide that one on and then push it over and um, attach it to the uh, the right side to the left side. But that only gets us two thirds of the way there uh, because once this is all together, I won't be able to join these wires to the wires that go up into the saucer, at least not effectively, because they all have to join some of these wires down here. So what I need to do is make a modular plug that I can run up the neck and have the plug hanging out of the neck that I can put the corresponding receptacle plug on the saucer so that I can uh, plug these things in and then set it down. That takes care of all my wiring. It joins everything up nicely. Um, it would be nice if I had a single six, since I need six holes, six wires, um, if I had a single six prong plug, I don't. I do have a series of these two prong plugs. Uh, there's a male and a female end. So what I'm going to do, they go together like that, is just gang up three of them. I, it's just gonna, I'm just going to have to write down exactly what each wire does so that I don't get lost in the, get lost in the weeds as far as making sure I've got the right plug plugged into the right receptacle because they're all identical. So those are your big, those are your big vocabulary words for today. Um, and all I got to do really is just, you know, number these one, two, and three, write down, okay, number one, the black wire goes X, number two, or number one, the red wire goes Y and figure that all out. That's not the hard part. The hard part is going to be getting all of these wires trimmed down to the right length so that they fit into this uh, tiny space that I've got. And I think what I'd like also to do is to make a little shelf for the board so that the board will be up and out of the way and protected more or less because Ralph did include a nice little plug-in for his wiring harness so I don't have to worry about damaging this board. It can kind of out be, be out and away and any of the heat from uh, 
soldering won't transfer down the line to the board and then just plug this wiring harness in at the last minute. So what I want to do is kind of hide this board up in here so that you can see what I'm talking about. Kind of hide this board up in here and that will allow me to run the wiring down through there and I also need to run the power wire down what's eventually going to be this post. The power wire goes down where the post is going to be and uh, the switch I need to shorten these wires because they're they're way long. I mean I like the fact that Ralph already soldered them on there but it's going to be way long and I'm going to hide the switch just on the hull here just right behind where the where the post comes out so I got I got to nibble a little area away for that and uh, put some epoxy to kind of pack that in place boy there's a lot of peas right there pack the epoxy to put it in place so uh, right about there is where the switch is going to go just behind uh, the post which will go up like that which is another reason why I kind of want to keep the board up and away from the post Okay, I've just spent the last few minutes uh, condensing the wiring here and trying to neaten it up so every little bit helps. Uh, it's going to make it easier when it comes time to uh, install this into the secondary hall, I believe. So what has to happen is that it's ha these lines here have to meet the lines that go into the uh, circuit board and they also have to I also have to splice in the lines thank you compressor uh, also have to splice in the lines that will go up to the saucer okay here you go see I've got the plugs carefully numbered one two and three and I've got them uh, plugged on or soldered onto the wiring that hangs out of the saucer so now I should be able to effectively pull wires out plug it together and then push everything down push everything down into the secondary hole like that so that's that's how it should work in theory you will see how well the practice goes good morning welcome back it is tuesday i feel like i it's all it's early it's only about uh, 10 and i feel like i have worked a whole day already um I was getting everything pushed into this side of the Enterprise C secondary hull. And you'll remember yesterday I got the plugs done up for, uh, actually I got the plugs done on the saucer. Well, this morning I put the plugs on the rest of the wiring so that that's ready to go. And I threw power to it, tried to, and I, and I was you know testing the whole thing, flipped the switch, everything ran except that except the red nav light and I know you've all been there before you you're you're, uh, uh, you're ready to close things up you give it one last shot of test and everything but one thing lights and or works and it was it's been a long morning um, because I mean, I was, first, first I started troubleshooting. I wanted to make sure that wire was working, make sure the circuit was working, make sure that when I plugged the saucer in, the saucer was working. The red light on the saucer worked, okay? That told me that the, that the circuit board was not bad. Um, so it had to be the wiring somewhere between this connection and that LED and that uh, fiber optic. Um, so you start doing your uh, process of elimination. What works, what doesn't work? And then it came down to it's either the bulb, the LED bulb here, or it is the, um, there's a kink in the wiring somewhere, somewhere the wiring broke. Well, the lesser of two evils would be to check the bulb. So, uh, and if you remember how compactly I made this thing when I was putting everything together, this will tell you maybe what my solution was. Yes, I had to cut this piece of plastic off, remove it to get to the bulb. And believe me, that was the lesser of two evils because if it wasn't the bulb, it was going to be somewhere in this wiring that if you recall correctly, is epoxied in. This whole saddle is epoxied together as one solid piece. So if it was not that bulb and it turned out that it was the wiring, well, you know what? We were gonna live without having a uh, red 
navigation strobe because I was not going to crack this thing open for love or money. But it turned out to be the bulb, pulled this out, dug into it, was up to my elbows in the cell, and uh, pulled out the old uh, back end of the uh, box that I had made with the fiber optic and the tubing and all of that. And because of the way it was made, I was able to slide the old bulb out, slide the new bulb back in, resolder it, and I had enough uh, slack up in here that I could get to the old wiring. So, long story short, that's solved. This uh, piece here, the side of the of the uh, of the secondary hull, is permanently uh, affixed, glued, epoxied, and all that, and. Just to give it one last juicing here, let me uh, let me attach the wiring. Show it off here, all the kids at home. Okay, we have we have both strobes running. Yay! And of course, they're getting bent all over the place. Luckily, they will get nipped down to very short. But they're getting damaged just from me bending things around. Okay, so we've got the strobes, we've got the navs, we've got the blue lights, we've got the bassards, we've got the impulse, we've got the uh, deflector. We've got the three jacks going up to the saucer. We've got the little switch on the bottom. So, now that everything is working, the next thing to do is to reinforce this joint with a little bit of one minute epoxy and then we are going to attach the other side of the secondary hull. Once the other side of the secondary hull is attached um, there'll be another round of puttying and sanding. Okay this doesn't look like as well maybe it does look as momentous as it actually is but uh, we've got the secondary hull all in one piece and uh, what I've done now is I'm just going around and addressing little bits of gap and seams that I need to look at. Now that I've got this second half of the secondary hull in, uh, there are some seams that need to be taken care of and cleaned up and sanded and puttied and all of that kind of stuff. That's still a lot easier to do that now than it will be once the saucer is on. That's why I, I, uh, designed this with plugs so that I could put the saucer on uh, later down the road. I did want to address something that came in the mail yesterday. It was a mail call day. It was a happy day. I got a surprise package, a care package from friend of the show and all around good egg, Elliot Brown. And he sent me, he took pity on me. He saw what I was struggling with, not struggling with, it's, it's just what it is. It was on the, the flashing circuit, the uh, strobe circuit that was built into uh, Ralph's board it's a little quick so he sent me a couple he sent me a couple strobe circuits and the beautiest thing about this strobe circuit is that it is adjustable now i have to touch these wires together because the solder came loose in the mail but there you go it's a strobe circuit and it's got a is that a rheostat or something on there it's got an adjusting pot on it so that i can speed it up or slow it down that's beautiful and this other one has got two built in, and I know these are going to find their way into future builds. I might even have something in mind for it, but uh, let's see. Let's get here. We go. I got to grab my. There we go. Just touch it to the battery. Which is actually about that's about the rate of the uh, nav strobes. But that's a that's on a time circuit. That's on that one of those one of those timer chips, I guess. But that's a homemade circuit from Elliot Brown. Lovely. Like I said, El, thank you, Elliot. I know these will find their way into a future build. Okay, it's taken a good chunk of the afternoon to get back to this point, but I uh, am happily at this point where I've got. The secondary hull taped off and I'm gonna outside of these areas that have already been masked because I've already painted underneath I'm gonna hit this thing with a coat of gray primer I'm gonna paint over all this blue that I've already painted 
kind of take it back to square one and that way I will be able to build it back up cleanly but it'll also help me with the areas that need to be uh, still sanded again. Yeah, I just took a minute to uh, put the phaser strips on the last bit of construction on this entire kit and that was these uh, outboard phaser strips that go on the pylons and the belly phaser strip and then there's one stupid little detail that goes right there. That's almost where I decided to put the switch but then I changed my mind at the last minute but all these last bits are in and I can already tell that this clear piece where the deflector is is going to need some hefty light blocking paint so let's uh, I'm going to do that now while it's right in front of me and uh, nothing is impeding it. Okay, it's time to I'm working a little bit later this evening because I'm trying to make up for some time and let's let the paint dry overnight but I want to go back and put some of the uh, uh, the lighter the lighter blue not the the lightest color but the medium color because we've got a lot of that still masked but there are there are spots on the nacelles and of course these side panels that need to have that blue paint put back on it and that was as I am trying to remember um, about half and half of the faded blue with the uh, off-white and a couple three drops of the airbrush thinner so uh, go ahead and put that back on and let me see I need to do a little mixy mixy here in the brush It's a little dark, but uh, it'll do, pig. And the reason I'm doing this on the cells is because there are some blue, some blue stripes that I can mask this color off and paint the blue or paint the white over top of it. still masked okay so all I've got left is the uh, trying to move real fast because this paint gets a little gummy if I leave it in the brush too long okay now I've got to do these side walls here on the secondary hull let me take these glasses off so I can see ironically uh, you can see where the too much moisture made it too runny Okay, let's see if I can get this other side done now. Now hopefully all this will mean that when I come back to it tomorrow, this will all be good and dry and ready for me to paint back the... Uh, lighter color on top of it. Oh, and if I'm remembering correctly, these are center stripped down the uh, back here. Also, is this blue color. Welcome back. I, I say welcome back. It's, you haven't gone anywhere. It's me. So I'm welcoming. You welcome me back. Hey, I'm back. Uh, it's Wednesday morning. We are finally going to put some final color on this I have been uh, working up on the masking for it masking some additional areas that I want to keep this dark blue like 
uh, the uh, indents here there's a couple of uh, raised uh, boxes here raised plates here on the inside and the out of the uh, pylons that I want to keep the color that they are and there's one other bit now and that is some striping that goes on top and bottom of the nacelles and I wanted to kind of put those on while you could see them so you could see what I was up to and uh, ooh, I forgot to make the mask for that spine piece I need to do that now too so let me let me think about that and uh, get back to you on it okay I'm back I'd take a time off to do some run a couple of errands but I'm back and I've got the the spine area plotted that was where I left off I wanted to make sure this area stays blue uh, but there are some stripages going on here across the uh, front or uh, across the top of the pylons and I wanted to uh, I'm sorry not the pylons but the warp engines and I wanted to put those on myself and I'm kind of just eyeballing those and that's tough to keep them going on square so let me maybe shut up and do this without talking okay and that has a it's a thicker line with a thin one on either side and if you get the thick one on first it might make the thinner ones easier Of course, this is all, all going on by eye. Actually, that's yeah, going on by hand. It reminded me of the old joke about playing the piano by ear and the teacher saying, don't you think you'd have more success if you used your hands? Uh, there you go. That's mostly straight, I think. But there you go, something like that. And I'm going to do the same thing over here, and then maybe one across the front. Come on, just lay it down straight and slice it off. There you go. So it looks something like that. Now I'm going to flip it over and do the bottom ones the same way. And um, i tell you what, I don't know if I am all that interested in making them line up top and bottom I don't I don't recognize that as a definite stripe that has to be done that way I'm trying to duplicate some of what you see here on the uh, uh, illustration where I think it's done more as fading so these are kind of left up to the individual modelers uh, tastes Okay, last little bit of boring making you watch me do this stuff. And then we will start throwing some paint on this guy. There you go. See, just put some stripe down in there. Now I've got to mix the paint up and uh, I'll get back to you. Hey, welcome back to Starship on a Stick. I am your host, um... What I've done is I've just basically taken the lightest blue-gray and white mixture and sprayed it all over the ship. And it still has that bluish tinge to it, uh, which is really what I was looking for. I don't want a white or gray uh, body on this. But now that this base coat is in, I can 
go back and obviously there are some seams that need to be touched up and some sanding to be done. And then we can do some blue carding over this, which you just, just do some shading. The areas that you see masks are masks on are the uh, solid areas that I want to keep that blue. So uh, I'm going to go stick this someplace where it can dry. Keep your mind dirty mind to yourself and um, start working on patching up the saucer. Okay, I've just uh, put on the light lighter coats on the saucer and I took the opportunity to kind of clean up some edges here and there. Nice thing about these uh, circle semi the concentric masks is you can always find one of them that uh, will fit your arc so you just cut a little piece of it out and you uh, put it along the edge of the um, grid lines there the hull panels and then you can line your, your straight lines up and do your spraying and it's just easy touch up uh, this was one I wanted to match I wanted to repaint this whole stripe so I put this whole mask down, sort of like what I did here. I wanted to redo this whole outside edge, so I put that complete circle down. Um, there's a little bit of this darkest color I need to touch up. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that now before I take that top mask off. And basically it's just a question of going to the other side of the grid line. and try to uh, touch up some of these angles. Okay, cool. Uh, and then we'll be, uh, oh, I also went in and, and just isolated the, uh, the bridge module and lightened it up a little bit. It's not quite as white as this and it's, it's a little bit darker than the blue around it. So, or a little bit lighter than the blue around it, but not as light as the whitest coat but things are going along nicely the secondary hull is hanging over where you can't see it but it is uh, drying and um, what I'm planning on doing is uh, making this so I can do just the the uh, the touch-up painting on this tomorrow I've got to paint these phaser strips in so those will all done, be done by hand and there's some little details now all of the um, Lifeboats are handled with decals, but the windows, the windows are going to be tough. I'm going to, I'm going to my uh, hobby shop tonight. I'm going to see if I can uh, pick their brains as to what would be the best tool to use for that. Whether it, I wish I had my rapidographs still. When I was in art school, I had a wonderful set of rapidographs, and they could, you could use the ink and just draw them right straight in there. But I don't think that's. Uh, feasible these days. Okay now the latest bit of mischief I've been getting into is I just took a straight old piece of paper post-it note and I just did some carding here just to break this up with some tones and some shades and uh, I might uh, go over that lightly with the lighter color again just to knock some of that back before I take all these masks off. Um, a couple of seams are jumping out that I probably should tend to give them some attention spank them around a little bit crack opened up here that I wasn't happy about so uh, might have to get some actually I think what I'll do is I'll try the uh, the Tamiya putty on it rather than using the Bondo because it is white and it is most of the way there in color and I think I can dab a little bit of it on here and uh, fill it in just put some on the old flat exacto knife and touch it right in here that will take care of it without uh, getting out the the big can of or the big tube of uh, Bondo, which would mean I'd have to do a whole bunch of painting over top of it. Good morning, welcome back. It is Thursday, it is the gateway to the weekend. It is going to be a big painting day today, I think. I started doing the hand painting on the top of the saucer here, as you can tell. I was curious about how easy these windows were going to be to fill in. I found that it takes only two things to do it right. Um, 
the tiniest brush you can find and the right kind of fluid. I am using the Mecca Primer Black, Black Primer. It's a little bit thicker than their uh, normal uh, Mecca colors, which can tend to be a little bit runny, but I can dilute it a little bit with water. So I'm playing with the consistency of it. You can always dilute something, but it's tough to make something thicker. Uh, so I was playing with that and just doing, you know, one at a time, trying to fill in these little depressions. And the nice thing about them is they are very well defined. They are very easy to fill in. If you get the right amount of uh, viscosity, see, that's my word for today. If you get the right amount of viscosity on the on your brush, you can go in and just touch a bunch of it and it will fill out to the, you know, you touch it in there and it'll fill out to the edges of the windows. And that's the great news. The other news is, um, you know, some people, with all there is to worry about in today's world, uh, I had a thought that woke me up last night, and that was uh, the decals for the lifeboats. I'm going, oh my God, what if those decals aren't backed in white? I'm going to have to go back in and paint all of these lifeboats a backing color so that the uh, decals will uh, show up against them. You don't want to have them disappear. Well, good news is that they are backed in white. I don't have to worry about that. But like I said, some people are worried about, you know, the fires in Australia or the political unrest in the country or any number of things. I'm worried about stupid lifeboats on a model. Um, but that's what makes the world go round. So I'm, I'm going in and I'm just painting, hand painting in some of the, uh, uh, the details on the top of the saucer and let me tell you if you put the saucer on your ship and you're not doing all this painting first you my friend are a better man than I because I could not imagine trying to get in and around this with all of the uh, uh, all of the windows particularly and have the saucer attached to the secondary hull so that's the reason number 16 why I am why I am glad I put uh, jacks on the bottom of this thing so that I could uh, work on it separately and as a matter of fact I'll get probably get everything done even down past the decaling stage because this is a very clean joint here this is very good and very clean very easy to make up so uh, there's not going to be any challenge I don't think and any impediments there'll be a challenge but there won't be any impediments to sticking that down at the last minute so while I'm going to do the rest of the windows and the top of the saucer and then set it aside and come back to what I was working on yesterday, um, there are some uh, there are some bits here that still some rough stages that need sanding and I need to touch up that lightest gray color on everything. But uh, today I think everything I need to work with is right here in front of me. I don't need to. Uh, uh, I don't need to do any more soldering. I don't need to do any more wiring. I don't need to do any more of anything rather than just painting. So hopefully uh, without uh, too many distractions, we'll get a lot done today. Okay, here's a, just a word or two about the uh, uh, reference part, the reference uh, picture I'm using. Now, if you can negate all of the damage, uh, you know, the, the battle damage, um, this is kind of where I'm getting my color scheme from, even though this is... A little bit more into the uh, duck egg and robin's egg and all the other bird egg blues and mine has got a little bit more of a greenish tint to it but uh, as far as painting in the details here around the bridge and uh, painting in the windows and such like that this is where I'm getting my my references from okay and I am continuing to uh, dot in the the windows like I said you can really tell once you've looked at the uh, uh, reference picture just how this is a little bit more teal than um, the reference pictures will show and but the rest of them I think are pretty close but um, you can see I went in and painted in the uh, the tan plates there so let's continue with these windows and then I can put the top of the saucer to the side while I work on the secondary hull. oh my gentle Jesus that's a lot of windows that's a lot of windows Hopefully it's all downhill from here because that should be, well, there's a goodly amount on the bottom, but not nearly as much as there were on the top. So I have to do the perimeter ones yet and all the ones that are on the, well, there's not so many here. Not so many. It's only on the neck. Uh, well, good. 
that's an awful lot of windows. I need to put this aside just just for my own sanity. Okay, starting the windows along the bottom side of the saucer, and the nice thing about these about this particular paint, this uh, this is the Mecca primer, black primer from Vallejo, uh, is that it dries pretty quickly, and then and then you can. Um, if you've slopped a little bit, I mean, I'm not paint. I'm trying to do my best job at painting these windows by just, you know, letting a drop kind of rest in the depression and, and fill that in. But if you do slop a little bit over the side, once it dries, you can take a very sharp exacto knife and just kind of brush it against the raised edge, and it will uh, it will allow you to clean that back off. So uh, it's not it's not an excuse to be sloppy but it is a uh, something you can do to clean up afterwards so that you can uh, not fret each and every one of these windows as being a be-all and end-all because you can clean them up and the last thing I want to do is like take a wet toothpick and or a wet q-tip and try to clean that out because that's just going to smear one and when, once you start smearing one and get it wet you might as well write it off because you're going to end up smearing all the rest of them so I've just got this these two stripes here and of course because there's less of them on the bottom they are going a little quicker which is a blessing uh, and then uh, we'll see what we'll take the masks off the secondary hall and see what the colors look like on that because there's plenty of windows that I need to paint in there. Okay, so I've just been picking at some details here on the lower lower saucer, painted into phaser strips, finished the windows, um, did some cleanup. Now it's the all important time finally to take these masks off of the secondary hull so that I can see what kind of uh, patching and damage control we need to do here. The only ones I think that I will leave in place are the uh, no I'll tell you what I'm gonna take them all off because I was thinking of leaving these blue ones on around the strip but because I don't want to spray uh, clear over but it doesn't really matter if, if those get frosted I can spray clear over that it doesn't it's not gonna harm it it doesn't it doesn't have to be completely clear that's what I'm saying so I can get spray on that so let's get the uh, the vinyl off of here and see what we're dealing with okay the masks are off of the secondary hull Mostly to good results. Mostly, I say. Uh, wait a minute, I forgot to take these ones off. You can see how well these ones came off, and uh, the paint underneath them is lovely. Um, that was not the case in all places, and it had a lot to do with areas where I had sprayed the, uh, uh, the gray Mecca paint, and it could be my own... Uh, lack of experience with these uh, Vallejo paints. I'm much more uh, comfortable with the Tamiya's as far as drying times and things like that. And I think I may have rushed the drying times and put vinyl down over areas where paint was not completely cured. Um, the older stuff, the stuff I did at the very beginning is giving me the best results so that's these guys right here and the uh, front and back all of the uh, shapes on the uh, pylons here those came out very nice uh, where I'm running into problems is these little stripes that I put on the hull just yesterday I think maybe the paint underneath them I had not let dry long enough before I put those on and that's why I'm getting the paint lift off and it's coming going all the way down to the primer so uh, those will need to be painted back in but these are coming off nicely so uh, it's you know it's it's the learning curve of dealing with the Vallejo paints they are um, thinner they are more watery than uh, Tamiya's and uh, that that could just be it they if I mix them at different strengths depending on because I have a tendency to mix in the cup on the airbrush if I mix it a little thin um, 
in one pass and then the next batch is a little thicker then you introduce an inconsistency and modeling like everything else thrives on consistency so that could have been an issue i was letting th not letting things dry long enough that really needed it so uh what i need to do really is just go back in with these brushes even though they are uh airbrush paints i can go into them to squeeze them out on the tube and paint them on the paint them on the ship and uh take care of patching some of the worst spots by hand okay i've uh gonna take a break from this i've gotten a lot of the uh secondary hall well, i've got all, all of the secondary hall windows done uh, they're not very clean, but I blame that partially on my uh, not so great ability to paint these tiny details and Secondly how poorly the uh, Windows are molded into the pieces themselves. They're not nearly as clean and Definitive as the saucer windows were and I think that has something to do with the shape of the part. I guess uh, That's my that's my rationalization and I'm sticking with it but uh, we're to a point now where I can let this sit for a while and dry. I, I need to probably put a uh, clear coat over this so that I can get ready for the decaling on it. Um, the decaling, I am pretty much ready for the decaling on the saucer. So we're going to see. Uh, we're dangerously close to getting this thing finished up this week. All I need to do is a million and six lifeboats. Huh. Not looking forward to that. Okay, I, for a fitting close to the day, I have taken the uh, gloss varnish, the Vallejo gloss varnish, and just spritzed it over the areas where the decals are going to go on the saucer, on top and bottom, and on the secondary hall, which is drying over there. And that'll get me ready to uh, put the decals, start putting the decals down tomorrow. Now, the... Uh, <coughs> Like the boring part is going to be cutting all these lifeboats out individually. Good morning and howdy. It's Friday. It's the last work day of the week and we are busily, busily working. Now normally, um, we're working on the Enterprise C. Normally I uh, don't really start working till about mid-morning. But today I was up with the chickens. I wanted to get a good, uh, a good head start on these decals because they are legion. There are a ton of them and it's all lifeboats. Uh, these are the aftermarket JT decals. Uh, I've got them from uh, Steve over at Cult TV Man. A, because they are much more complete than the ones that come with the kit. And B, the kit is elderly. And uh, like most things that are elderly, it can use a little assistance. And the decals, I was not going to trust. So better to get the, the JT bought decals. Now, the one caveat... That's my word for the day. The one caveat uh, uh, to aftermarket decals is they are printed in such a way as they don't have individual carrier film. So you will have to cut all these out separately. And you can see there are a ton of them. There are a blue million, as they used to say. Uh, and if you look carefully, and this is one thing that JT did that I really appreciate because it would have been really easy to overlook. And, you know, nobody really would have said boo about it. But on the Enterprise C, on this kit, I won't say it's the way it is on the actual Enterprise C, but it is on this kit. There are two different sizes of the, uh, two different proportions of the lifeboats. There are the standard square ones that you see up here on the uh, bridge deck and on the, the secondary deck. These are the ones you're more familiar with. Enterprise D has them, Voyager has them. Uh, they're the square ones. Now, the rest of the, oh, and there's also some square ones down here on the secondary hull right here and right here are square ones. But on the rest of this uh, ship, the um, they're distorted. Well, they're, they're more rectangular. They're skinnier than they are tall. And I don't know whether that's, uh, you know, whether that's some genius at, uh, at the MPC put that together, AMT, sorry, uh, when they were designing this or what, but, uh, or whether it was just happenstance. But, uh, uh, JT has made two different sizes of decals, the, the wider ones and the more plenty narrow ones. So make sure you're getting those straight when you're putting them on. Also, um, for the very obsessive among you, that 
the printing is on there. Now I can't tell you that each one of these has a different number on it, although I do see some variations, but when you put the magnifying glass on these, you can actually read where it says NCC 1701C on each and every bloody one of these. So that is some intensely detailed printing and my hat is off to uh, whoever prints these for JT because they are uh, yeah, they are quite excellent. Now, there's no registration problems on them. They're beautifully printed. They are tough enough. That they can handle my manhandling of them. And like I said, the only problem with it is you have to trim them very close because the carrier film is one big sheet. This is all on the same carrier film. But it's got metallic printing on it. It's got white printing on it. It's fantastic. So I can't wait to put the rest of these on. It really does add a lot of flavor to what is a lot of different blues. And you're, you're looking at all these blues and you're going, oh, Lord, that's a big, that's a big uh, amount of, you know, color. But the red striping and the red pinstripes and the red ba banner, banners and pennants will really bring that extra bit of color to them. Now, the only thing I wish that they, he might have included were the uh, yellow triangles here that go for the maneuvering thrusters. That might have been nice to have those, but I can see, you know, he got, he got the important ones on here, and all of the lettering is just minute and perfect. Um, so, got one bank of these on. These are the normal sized ones, or the, or the skinny ones, and then all of these are the, the bigger ones, so Basically, I'm just cutting them off of this sheet and filling them in, and uh, it's not really anything more difficult or sexy than that. Now, you can see all this glossy gloppiness behind it. That is just what I sprayed on last night. That is the Vallejo gloss varnish that I'm simply putting on underneath where the decals go. And then once this is dry, the whole tortilla, the whole enchilada, the whole other Mexican food... Uh, is going to get a, a flat coat or a dull coat put over top of it. But um, in order to get these decals done and dried so that I can get the bottom ones on, because there are even more, uh, there's not as many, but there are even more. And then each of these phaser strips has a detail on either end of the, de of the phaser strip that has to have a decal. So there are a ton of decals that go on here. So um, that is why I wanted to get an early start. Take a minute while I'm letting some of these uh, lifeboats uh, rest in the water. I'm getting ready to put on this last bit on the top. And it brings me to, not a complaint, this is not a complaint, this is a helpful suggestion. Um, there are a lot, a lot more of these lifeboats on the sheet than we will need. Just doing a quick head count. I can see that uh, I've barely scratched the surface of these and that's enough for a whole top. The bottom doesn't have that many more on it. The secondary hull doesn't have that many more on it. Um, I wish, I wish, uh, if there is ever a redesign of this kit, that um, instead of having all these extra rows of the small lifeboats, if he'd have put one extra row of the large ones as well, because it did turn out that there are only just as many large lifeboats as you need. And I uh, screwed one up. I was trying it out the other day, and I accidentally cut one of the big ones off to see. I was I was checking to see whether they were backed, so I, I used it as a as a test case, figuring there were plenty. Um, and then there are plenty, but there are plenty of the smaller size, not plenty of the large ones. So I'm actually going to be one larger one short of what I need. So I hid that down on the secondary hall where no one's going to spot it. But it, I just think it would have been, you know, it just as easy to throw another, you know, five or six of the large lifeboats on this sheet as it would have been to, uh, you know, make extras of the small ones. That's my rant. It's a minor rant. Everything else seems to be going very well. I've got the, uh, I've got the tiny little hash marks on either side of the phaser strips down, and I think it's time to put the big showy ones on. Yes, it's time for the registry decals. That's always my favorite part of decaling. I need to cut them out of here. And 
stick it down. Now this is going to be interesting because um, it's going on this darker blue area, which is strange. It's not. Uh, this is not a white hull like your general starships are used to, usually are, especially where the uh, registry goes. So uh, I'm just cutting this off the sheet, and then I will trim it up a little tighter after that. But I need to get the uh, the big old name and numbers off. So uh, next time you see this, it should have the big showy registries on it. The big registries are on. And uh, say what you will about all of these millions of grid lines on this saucer. Uh, it does make it darn handy when it comes to lining up your decals. If you don't, uh, if you can't find a center line on a decal on this kit, you are blind, my friends, because every single stinking degree on the map or degree on the circle is there, and it is very simple to line that up. And the white printing on the decal does it does make it. You'll forgive the gloss; this will all go away, but it does make it stand out against that darker background. Okay, so the only decals I've got left to do on the top of the saucer now are the ones that go on either side of these back or rear phaser strips. So let me get those guys on. I'm doing decaling on the secondary hull now, and I've got the lifeboats and the phaser emitters. I'm sorry, uh, those are transporter emitters, I believe, on the bottom or on the top of the pylons here. Uh, we've got our first our first hiccup, and that is this decal number 13, which is supposed to go down the spine of the... Uh, oops, it help if I got it in camera. Um, it is supposed to go down the spine of the uh, secondary hull. Well, it's not long enough. Uh, it's the wrong size. You put it up against the kit, it doesn't cover near the amount of space that the it does on the instructions so we're going to have to uh, uh, either I bring it all the way down to the bottom here and it runs out halfway up or I start it in the center or start it at the top and let it uh, fill its way down it just does not uh, it needs to be probably half again as long as it is so we're going to fill it in in that spot but it's not going to come near near far enough down. I just decided to scrap that decal. I'm going to just paint a red line down that center. What has happened is there's a channel right in here. There's a thin channel. It goes like that. It's a concave. And this decal, you're welcome to it. This is what's left of it. I just scraped it out. Uh, trying to get it to form into the curve of the bottom. Uh, is a fool's errand. Um, so, let that dry. It, for what it is, I can just touch a uh, touch a uh, thin line of red paint in there and it'll accomplish what I need it to accomplish. It's a very difficult area to try to stick a decal to. So, I life is too short to worry about that. I do need to put on the last couple of the name and the number here on the top of the pylon and that will finish everything that is on the top of uh, the secondary hull. Then I can start working like on the sides and flip it over and do the bottom. But yeah, I have a, I have a, uh, a, a five minute rule on decals. If I can't get it in the right place in five minutes, it goes away. Okay, here's a case where the decal is actually larger than uh, what is on the instruction sheet, and that is these big guys right here, the ones that go underneath the center of the nacelles. These guys here, they show up as, well, I mean, on, on the actual kit, they take up almost the full amount of space, and on the instructions, they come out much smaller. They only take up. They only take up this smaller amount of space than they do on the actual kit, where it almost goes all the way into that scoop there. So, a uh, little bit of adapting needs to be done, 
and it's tough with all these painted lines on here and shadings that um, the decals go on absolutely square and straight sometimes you can see a shaded painted line and you start lining your stuff up you're lining your decal up on that instead of the actual uh, actual geom geography of the nacelle itself so um, got two more decals to go on that which was right there and right there it's odd that there are no uh, decals for any of this area that just seems like a big wide open space where the you know, there should be a decal but uh, nothing provided for that so it's going to be hidden under the stand I mean it's going to be next to the stand pole so you're not going to see it a lot anyway most of the stuff that happens on the underside uh, of most starships you don't ever see the bottom of them because of the way they're usually displayed right they have the belly uh the belly boats the belly boats the uh lifeboats that are on the belly are now uh, there you go well, there you can see the belly boats are in place i've got a couple more up by the uh up by the pylons but i will put those on when i do the side pennant um, which are kind of next there are still a ton that need to go on the nacelles themselves and on the neck but those are kind of the side view ones i've done i've done the bottom view ones and i've done the top view ones but i've got a whole mess that need to go on the side views so we're gonna let all that uh dry while uh, I go grab some lunch. Alrighty, the decal uh, for the bottom of the saucer has finished. Uh, I've got a couple little touch-ups here to do, and then we will be ready to do the final flat coating on the saucer. Final flat coating on the saucer, and then the um, uh, we'll be ready to attach this to the secondary hull. Now I just have to get the secondary hull ready. But yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. Now the glossiness I hate, and you and you hate it too. I know you do. Uh, and we'll get rid of that once we put the flat coat on it. But uh, um, I'm letting the decal settle in. Make sure I'm not touching anything on the bottom while I am uh, looking at the tops of these. This could get pushed down a little bit better. I'm seeing some silvering between all of that and I might just want to put a uh, little bit of solver set across that because there's a lot of a lot of panel lines for these bigger decals to settle in and around the nice thing about the uh, lifeboats is that there are no I mean it's a nice flat surface it just sits on the top there but when it comes to these registries those span them all of those uh, all of these panels and of course that means that it needs to sink down into the panel lines so I'm just giving that the most slightest touchy touch with the q-tip after I have put the solo set on but there you go um, saucer needs to dry and then it will be ready to uh do the grand reunification here okay i'm finishing up the body decals and i went back to the original set that came with the kit and i wanted to try to see whether i could salvage one of them at least and that was the one going down the spine so i don't have to paint that i did use the one that came with the kit because it was slightly stronger i was surprised at how resilient it was as old for as old as it was and it has carrier film on it, so I didn't have to trim it out. So it was the exact size that it needed to be to fit inside that indent. So good on me, that worked. Um, uh, I need to see if there's any other miscellaneous little decals that I have missed. Obviously, I'm not using the impulse deck decal because I've got lights behind that. Oh, I've got the fantail. The fantail enterprise that goes on the back of the... Uh, well, on the fantail. So let me get that one put down, and I think that's all of them. And now it's just a matter of, are these going to dry? You really want to let decals dry overnight before you, before you seal them, because 
if you've got any trapped water underneath them, you got to give that time for it to uh, evaporate, dry out. So uh, I'm at that precarious spot. So maybe I'll go work on the base. Okay, we're getting towards the end of the week. And as you can tell, it ain't done yet. So uh, to finish off this week, I think what I'd like to do is to join up the saucer with the uh, secondary hull. And uh, any harm I can do from here on, I can do with both halves attached. So I'm going to go ahead and glue those up, plug them together. And I won't be able to wire it into the base, but I will be able to uh, put some power to it uh, to show you the final result. Now, the, the basards are not uh, on, the strobes are not clipped. But uh, I'm going to see if I can get this last bit put together and see what kind of light show we can put on to finish out the week. Okay, I think this is a fair place to stop for the week. It is not done. There are lots of finishing touches I need to do. I need to put the fiber fill inside the domes for, for the first thing. I need to trim the uh, fiber optics. I need to put the fiber optics in the saucer to uh, bring the lights out a little bit. But there you go. What do you think? Let me, let me pull the camera down. I know I'm taking it off of the uh, tripod, but I wanted you to see the, the underside. That looks pretty good. And all of the... Uh, now see, you can see the light in there. And I'm wondering now if I shouldn't just put a little drop of glue over that and call it done. I could put a little dome of epoxy over that. Call those done. I don't need to put a fiber in there. But uh, you didn't see, this is the uh, hammered metal paint on the uh, base that came with the kit. Not too bad. Paint's kind of rough. Oh, the, like the impulse engine's looking nice. Paint's kind of rough and the blue really overpowers everything. But, uh, how about that? I didn't realize the Bessards came so damn close to the saucer there. Those were almost touching. It was tough trying to fit those in there. I look at the, uh, uh, the schematics and uh, it doesn't doesn't I mean you, you can see it there but it just doesn't seem as as tight as when you actually have it uh, built like that it's uh yeah I mean it's, it's there on those sheets as well it's it's right up there it just uh, feels a lot closer these could be popped back a little but, uh, man, that would be horrible if you had quarters anywhere near that. You just have that light in your eye the whole time. But that's a good place to stop it for this week. And then I will, uh, I'll start next week with a, uh, a wrap up of this where I've shown what I've done to finish it. But, uh, by and large, it's done. Uh, and that's where we're going to finish it for this week. Even if the ship itself isn't quite finished, I would put it in the 96 percentile. Not quite done, but uh, almost done. And like I said, I will, I will start up next week with a wrap-up of this. But uh, much better week than last. And i got to tell you, if it were, if it were this was a week ago today, I was out of power. Today, you know, I'm not going to whine about that, but... I could see where is if I'd have had that day, I'd be done with this. I, the, the day that I lost, I never quite made up. So the day that I, it would be done if I'd have had that day to work on it. And that's my, that's my rationalization for it. So uh, until next week, when we'll finish this up and, I know you walked out of camera, and we will be building the Cyclops and Chariot next week. I mean, this shouldn't, shouldn't take more than just a one week, one week project on that so until then you be good you be good to each other and we'll see you here next time when i promise this will be done